students welcome to ACI Academy. In today's video we are going to discuss about the second part of Agathan physiographical region where we are going to discuss four other remaining physiographical areas of Africa. So the first of most important of them is the savanna grassland. Now if we take a look at the map of Africa we can find that savanna grassland basically is situated on both sides of the equator. Equator is passing from somewhere around this region that divides say, Africa into equal half. So on both sides of the equator, we can see a large area that is straddles along the border on the eastern and western coast of Africa. And that makes up the savanna grassland. Now the savanna grassland covers almost half of Africa and has an area of almost 13 million square kilometer or 5 million square miles. In terms of the expanse, these grasslands cover most of the central Africa beginning south of the Sahara and Sahel and ending north of the continent southern dip. Among Africa's many savanna region, the most important of them or the largest of them is what is basically known as Serengeti Plains that is situated in between Kenya and Tanzania. Now, Serengeti generally refers to endless plain. The Serengeti is an African term, African word which refers to endless plain and it is quite so true because if you stand at some place in Serengeti and look around you, you will not be able to find any other geographical feature. Everywhere around you, you will find only the plain which seems to be never ending and that is how the name Serengeti has come into existence. It is very, very vast, undulating kind of plain that stretches for almost a distance of 30,000 square kilometers from Kenya's Masai Mara Game Reserve to Tanzania's Serengeti National Park. Now, in the savanna grassland, talk about especially in Serengeti grassland, it is uh, home to one of the continent's highest concentration of large mammal species such as lions, hyenas, zebras, giraffe, and elephants. And in the Serengeti grassland, also you'll find what is popularly referred as big five animals of Africa, which are lion, then we have elephant, we have giraffe, then we have uh, hippopotamus, and then we have the uh, what we can call as the uh, wild buffalo. So all these animals are found in the savanna grassland region, the Serengeti Plains. Each year, the most important or one of the most popular event or phenomena that Serengeti grassland witness is the migration of wild beast. Wild beast, the scientific name is Conochitis taurinus. They travel in a kind of circular migration pattern following seasonal rains across the Serengeti plain. And it is believed that more than millions and millions of wilder beasts basically traverses across from one part of the grassland to the other part of grassland in search of water. And many geologists and geographers refer to this phenomena also as eighth wonder of the world. Now, the migration is not only important for the wild beast, but it also plays a very important role in regulating the ecological cycle of the savanna grassland because due to the grazing and trampling of the grass when they are migrating, it allows new grasses to grow, old grasses to wither away and also their waste product help in fertilization of the soil and when the rain returns, the grasses again blooms. The second important region of the African continent is what we can refer as equatorial rainforest. Now, uh, what we can say, unfortunately, most of Africa's native rainforest has been destroyed due to continuous development, agriculture, as well as forestry. But 80% of Africa grassland today is concentrated in what we can call as the Central African region along the Congo River Basin. If you take a look at this map of Africa, we can see this is the country that is the Congo. And around this Congo, you have a large concentration of the equatorial rainforest region. If you talk about the African rainforest, it is very, very diverse kind of forest with estimated 8,000 different types of plant species that has been documented. Obviously, more than 1,100 of the species are endemic in nature. Endemic means they have originated or they have evolved in these equatorial rainforests of Africa and they are not found anywhere else on the earth. Only 10% of the plant in Africa rainforest have been identified. And that is 8,000. So we can understand there are more than 80,000 types of plant species that is estimated to be in the African rainforest. Now, because this forest area is situated in the equatorial zone, so whenever we have strong heating and then the surrounding water bodies, the oceans are there, we have evaporation of water that further leads to condensation, cloud formation, and rainfall. So equatorial rainforest of Africa experiences rainfall on a daily basis, which is a type of convectional rainfall. And every day, somewhere between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., you have the maximum amount of rainfall that falls on this equatorial forest of Africa. And then again, cycle is repeated the next day. If we try to understand about the diversity of animals in the African rainforest, so it has also a very rich variety of animal life. 
It is believed that a six kilometer or a four mile patch contained up to 400 different type of bird species, 150 types of butterfly species and 60 different species of amphibian. The important animals or mammals that you will find in the African rainforest are African forest elephant that are also called as bush elephant or Loxodonta cyclotis. We have gorillas, the black colobus monkey and the okapi which is a donkey like relative of the giraffe. Apart from that you will also find many reptiles such as gaboon viper. We have Goliath beetle and then we have we can see scorpions and the most important mountain gorillas which are the most uh, which are found in the regions of Uganda and Rwanda and these are one of the most unique species of the African rainforest. The com and then coming to the next important physiographical feature is what is referred as the Great Lakes of Africa or also called as African Great Lakes. Now if we talk about African Great Lakes it basically is straddling all along the eastern coast of Africa from Ethiopia in the north to Zambia and Mozambique in the south. So if you try to understand it is mainly made up of nine major lakes that is Lake Turkana, then we have Lake Albert, Lake Kyoga, Lake Kyu, Tanganyika, Malawi and then we have Lake Chilwa. Apart from that the largest lake in this region that you will find is what is called as Lake Victoria which is straddling at the border of three countries of Africa that is Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania as you can see from this map. Not only that Lake Victoria also is source of one of the long actually the longest river of the world that is the Nile River and one branch of Nile River originate from Lake Victoria flows through Uganda and then further flows in the northward direction to Egypt where it drains in the Mediterranean Sea. Now the reason why African Great Lakes have developed if we try to understand the geological basis of that so they are situated in nine countries that surround the Great Rift Valley. So basically what is happening if you look at this part of the ma map we are seeing that along the dotted line the African plate the western plate which is called as Nubian plate and the east we have the Somali plate. So the Nubian plate and Somali plates are moving away from each other they are separating apart and due to their separation which is called as continental continental divergence in terms of plate tectonics it has created a kind of rift in the continental crust of the Africa and thus as the African continental crust is continuously moving away and also it is separating away from the Arabian plate gradually what has happened here and there depressions have been filled up with water and this filled up depression is what has led to formation of what we call today as the great lakes of the African uh, African Rift Valley. So this geological process created some of the largest and deepest lake in the world. In terms of biodiversity also these great lakes have a lot to offer because they have a very diverse range of both aquatic and terrestrial animal life because water is something that is necessary for both kind of animal species whether they are living in water or they are living outside of the water and thus large amount of fishes large number of different types of fishes such as 45 kilogram Nile perch and 2.5 centimeter kickly you can understand from very large to very small kind of fish species you can find in the great great lake season of africa apart from that when the animals such as wild beasts migrate through the endless plains of serengeti they also spend some time around the great lakes region and use the lakes as a watering hole not only that even the hippopotamus one of the most majestic animals of africa and crocodiles one of the most majestic reptiles of african uh, freshwater reptiles of africa they call this particular regions as their home and great lakes about everything from rainforest to savanna plant communities it has all these areas included within itself However, the recently what we are seeing that the Great Lakes seasons are also suffering from a severe problem of invasive alien species. Invasive alien species such as water hyacinth and papyrus, they have actually begun to take over the entire shorelines endangering animals and plant life in this particular region. It is in this particular region of Great Lakes, you will also find the tallest peak of African continent that is Mount Kilimanjaro situated in Tanzania and is standing at elevation of 5895 meters. Mount Kilimanjaro is also the tallest free standing mountain of the entire world. The last region which we have to talk about is the southern region of Africa. Now if you look at this map, southern region of Africa basically constitute the countries such as South Africa, Angola, Namibia, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, Mozambique and Zambia. Apart from that, the island of Madagascar also is categorized under the southern region of Africa. Now the most important geo geological uh, feature that you will find in southern Africa is what is referred as Kapwal Kreton which is situated between the Botswana, Zimbabwe and South Africa. This Kapwal Kreton is a kind of bedrock, the shelf of bedrock which is believed to be more than 2.6 billion years old. 
If you look at the eastern part of the southern Africa, you will have a mountain range such as Drakensberg mountain range extending all the way from South Africa passing through Lesotho and basically it covers the entire eastern coast of South Africa. So Kapgol Krenon as well as the Drakensberg mountain range is the most important geological feature of South Africa. Apart from that, if you go on the western coast of southern Africa, we have many dry desert areas such as Namib desert. Kalihari Desert in the Af South Africa, Namibia Desert in Namibia, then we have Succulent, Karu, Nama Karu. So all these area and dry regions have developed mainly due to the flow of a cold ocean current along the western coast of Africa. And this cold ocean current is called as Benguela Current. So when the Benguela Current flows across the western coast of Africa, it actually produces a chilling effect, it actually produces a drying and desiccating effect because the evaporation is lesser and due to which rainfall is very very scanty in nature. And these low rainfall conditions have led to development of the desert-like conditions. Not only that, if you look at the flow of the wind that is happening in this region, the wind is also kind of offshore winds. And offshore winds, since they are moving from the land to sea, they do not cause any kind of precipitation or rainfall. And also this area lies in the high pressure belt, where we have continuous subduction or sinking of the air masses, actually obstructing the movement of the uh, air or warm air in the upper direction, and this preventing any kind of rainfall. So these are the reasons why it is a dry end of the day. So overall, if you look at the South Africa, we have three major kind of feature, Drakensberg mountain range in the east, Kapwal Kraton in the central and eastern region, and then we have desert and arid regions in the western coast of Africa. In terms of floral biodiversity, the southernmost part of Af South Africa is what is referred as Cape Floral Region or Cape Floral Kingdom. It is believed to be one of the richest areas for plants in the entire world. And while the Cape Floral Regions covered less than 0.5% of Africa, it is home to nearly 20% of the continent's plant life, continent's flora. Not only that, the South African's South African national flower that is called as King Protea, as you can see from the picture here, is also found in the Cape Floral Region. As far as the animal life of Cape Floral Region is concerned, it also has huge number of huge diversity of animals such as lions, elephants, baboons, white rhinos especially, and Burchell's zebra. Apart from that, other animal species such as impala, which is a type of deer, and a springbok, which is a type of gazelle, is also found in this particular region. And these animals can spring several feet into the air to avoid the predators. The list of the animals that you can find in South Africa, the Cape region of South Africa is obviously given here. So that is all about this particular video. I hope you understood about the floral diversity, faunal diversity, and overall geological features of the major physiographical regions of Africa. That is all for this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it to the friends, and let's subscribe to our channel for more such content. Thank you very much.